coaches, thanks for joining me for another episode. We recently started a new partnership with Football Careers that we're very, very excited about at Modern Soccer Coach. They are the global football recruitment company that specializes in recruitment for clubs, colleges, universities, private soccer academies all over the world. And we're joined today by one of their directors, Piero Carino, to talk about something that we should probably talk about a little bit more as coaches, and that's your resume, and specifically what not to do when putting your resume together. So I wanted to get Piero on, ask him a couple of questions. They've also got a special offer for Modern Soccer Coach followers towards the end of this video. So hang in there for that. Also subscribe, like below, check out their website. Here we go. Three biggest mistakes that coaches make when they're putting together their resumes. So, I mean, we, we obviously see literally hundreds um, of resumes uh, on a weekly basis, um, obviously from, from managing various recruitment campaigns for clubs and obviously people applying for roles through a job board as well. So we do see quite a number. I would probably say, so three, I'd say number one would probably be um, one of the things that a lot of candidates forget to do is maybe have like a kind of, we call it a sort of personal profile. It's a bio. So it's something to really sort of introduce yourself when you're you're kind of presenting your resume, a little bit about your kind of background. It's a really good opportunity to kind of get in unique selling points. So rather than just the kind of general kind of wording, which you tend to see quite a lot of kind of honest, trusting, hard work, all those kind of things, they can be quite kind of general things that, you know, most people can put in there. But what we would always kind of suggest to do is to have maybe a kind of two to three bullet points, quite a kind of punchy bio to introduce your background where you can really get in, as I say, kind of unique selling points, bit about your background. So it might be, for example, you've had success in terms of developing players um, to progress into a first team environment, for example. So that could be a unique selling point about yourself that you want to get across. There might be certain achievements or qualifications that you want to get in there as well. It's really, we kind of say to individuals, it's like, almost like your sales pitch. So quite often in, in, in soccer and football, if someone's looking at your resume, they're going to look at it really quickly. So maybe 20 to 30 seconds, you've got to really kind of sell yourself. So rather than going straight into qualifications, experience, it's just a way of kind of introducing yourself and your background. It's the first thing they're going to read. So you want to make sure you're really sort of selling your kind of strengths as I say, your selling points and, and really demonstrating your background within the game already. And it doesn't, sometimes you, you, you see maybe individuals who do a really long section. Again, clubs probably don't want to see that. Recruiters don't want to see that. You want it to be quite kind of short and sharp, but get across the kind of key points, I would say. Um, so that would probably be number one. Uh, number two would be structure of CV, I would say. So... Always kind of have in your mind the, the kind of roles that you're looking to apply for. Quite often we'll see resumes where, you know, they've maybe got a USSF, a UEFA qualification, and it's right at the bottom of maybe four or five pages. Quite often, as I alluded to before, you know, your resume can get looked at so quickly that you want to make sure all the key information comes across at the top end of the document. So you've got you know, maybe a kind of personal profile, the bio I spoke about, you're maybe getting across your qualifications. So it might be USSF A license, UEFA A license. There might be um, a sports or football related degree that you want to get across. Probably that's another error. And, and sometimes people have all the qualifications. You probably want to just put the most kind of relevant ones. So to give you an example, if you had a USSF B license, but you also had the A license, no real need to put the 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 kind of B license in there because they see you got your A license, they know you've got your B. So things like that. So you want to keep that kind of short and sharp, and then get in all the kind of relevant detail. So say for example, if you are applying for a position and it's youth development, you want to make sure that your youth development experience comes across at the very top, and you're going into detail in terms of you know roles and responsibilities, maybe any key achievements. Um, you're maybe getting a kind of written endorsement from someone you've worked with in youth development. So you're really kind of making it relevant towards the kind of roles that you're looking to apply for. Sometimes people make the mistake of maybe having like the full-time, so maybe they're a part-time coach, for example, at a club, and they've maybe got details of their full-time position, and that's at the top. And then 
you maybe got the coaching stuff further down. You just want to make sure you make it really relevant. So when they're looking at that CV very quickly, they can kind of see your background, see your qualifications, see your experience, see the success you've had. Um, and it's just allowing you to really kind of sell yourself in the best way very quickly. Um, so I would say structure of CV is is, is massively important. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be the kind of second one, I would say. Um, third one would be probably the length of CV. So sometimes you see kind of resumes and it's maybe, as I say, it might be four or five pages long. Recruiters, you know, and clubs, employers, they, they don't tend to want to read through that. Ultimately, that there can be hundreds of applications for a position. So we always suggest maybe two pages, something that's short and sharp. As I say, it's kind of angled towards the kind of role you're looking at. It's got all the key information in there, but it's not too wordy. You don't need to go into roles that are maybe, you know, 10 to 12 years ago. Um, you want to kind of focus on your... As I say, your most relevant, but probably your most kind of recent positions and kind of go into detail on them. And it's not to say that the rules prior don't go on your resume. You could still highlight them. So you could still have a uh, head coach, the club, the date, and just have it as a kind of summary, like an additional summary of the, the kind of rules that are maybe further back. So they can still see your, your kind of progression from where you've been to where you are now and the, the kind of rules you're kind of focusing on, as I say, are, are the kind of top end of the document. So... Yeah, we would always kind of say two pages um, just for the fact that you want to get across that key detail um, because they've got to go through so many applications. You want it to be short and sharp, but to say getting that key detail. Um, sometimes people make the mistake of having something maybe too short. And when that happens, they can maybe have uh, maybe a summary, as I kind of spoke about there, maybe a summary of role, where it was, the dates, and have that in a kind of long list. They might have qualifications. They'll maybe have a bio, possibly. But it's maybe on a kind of one-page format. Now, the issue with that kind of document is the fact that it maybe doesn't give enough detail that's really going to sell you. So within each of your positions, they don't know, you know, maybe what you've done, the kind of roles, responsibilities, the success you've had. We always feel that having kind of written endorsements from people you've worked with in the game, kind of drawn out your qualities, drawn out their experience of working with you, that can always add a lot of value. So a one pager can sometimes sort of undersell you. Two pages is probably a kind of a perfect balance. Um, so we would always kind of suggest two, two would be the kind of recommended amount. We sometimes kind of produce brochure format series. That's probably more for individuals that have worked in the game for a, a long number of years. They've maybe got varied experience. And we'd probably then tend to kind of section off this to the kind of resume. So you'd maybe have like first team experience, you'd have youth development experience, you'd have coach education, whatever it may be. There's kind of more experience and, and probably having a kind of shorter document for them. Again, probably similar to before when I said the one page is it maybe doesn't sell them enough. There's maybe then bits that are possibly missing that would allow that individual to, to sell themselves that bit better. Um, it's also, you know, if you have a document like that and it's kind of into different sections, it's almost like an all-round package, like, well, they've got experience in, in that, you know, youth development, scouting, they've done coach education as well. So it's it's kind of getting off across all their experience. What it also does is it allows for more room for testimonials as well. So that type of document can, can maybe allow for five to six endorsements. And you maybe then want to kind of consider you know, getting endorsements from different types of people you've worked with. So it might be people you've worked with that maybe board level, it might be kind of coaches you've worked with, it might be people you've worked with in, say, coach education, it might be players you've developed who can kind of draw on your qualities as a coach and how you help mentor them and develop them and take, to them, take them to the next level of their game. So um, you can really get sort of varied testimonials. Um, so, yeah, probably the three... The personal profile, the the structure of the document, the length of the document um, as well. I'll give you a little bonus one as well, because this is this is a, a simple one, but so many people forget to do it, and that's actually put your correct contact number and email address. Crazy, but sometimes we see resumes and we're trying to get in contact with the individual, and we can't because. The contact number or the email address isn't on there. 
So a real basic one, but have your kind of contact details at the very top of your resume. So you've got maybe your kind of name, you know, your contact number, your email address, even maybe a kind of link to your LinkedIn page as well if you use LinkedIn. It seems a basic one, but and it seems an obvious one, but uh, it's a kind of common mistake. Brilliant, brilliant. I love that last one. I've probably done that some stage. <laughs> you know about it. Thanks so much for Piero for jumping on. We're going to hear from him again very, very soon. Massive thanks to Football Careers for the partnership. We're excited to team up with them. Please check them out, footballcareers.com. In addition to their specialist recruitment services, they also support candidates at all levels of the game with professionally designed football resumes. Piero took a look at mine, redone it, and the professionalism and the design blew me away. They also support candidates with coaching philosophy brochures, PowerPoint presentations, and also interview coaching for all the application and interview needs. They've been kind enough to offer Modern Soccer Coach followers 10% off all the products on their website using the code MSC10, MSC10, footballcareers.com. Thanks so much to Piero, and please go ahead and check them out on the link below. See you soon.